I come from a, a family that's quite proud. Our, um, our motto is basis virtutum constantia, which means the basis of virtue is constancy. And it was a, a crest given to us in 1066 at the Battle of Hastings by William the Conqueror uh, as opponents because we fought for old King Harold. So Meryl knew all this history, you see, that goes with our family. And so one night at college, I wrote her this letter and said, you know, um, I'd, like, I'd like to ask you to marry me, but you've got to understand that if I'm going to do that, you're going to have to have an interview with the family. You know, you're going to have to be interviewed by my eldest brother and my father and my uncle to de decide whether you're going to be a suitable candidate or not. I said, uh, I, I know this may be a bit of a shock to you, but, um, you know, you're mar marrying into an elite family here. It was a joke, but I only wrote the fact that it was a joke the next day. And somehow the letter got delayed in the mail. And so she walked around for about three days in a terrible sweat, trying to work out whether she loved me enough to go through with the interview with these three steads to check whether she would uh, measure up or not. <laughs> uh, she nearly killed me when she found out. Paul and I ended up going into the army together. We actually ended up in the same barrack room together. And so we were able to support one another through all those six crazy weeks where you feel like you're going out of your mind and you're pretty sure you are. Um, with little sleep and early mornings and um, running everywhere you went, physical exercise till you dropped. It was neat having somebody there to do it with and be able to commiserate with each other. But the last three months we were literally in combat every day. So it gave me some time to learn the skills that I needed, which were incredible. A group of terrorists had set up in the, the riverbed right next to us and opened fire on us with an RPD. And it was the scariest thing out because we all went to ground, and uh, but there's nowhere to hide. There was a little footpath that had been worn in the ground and we were lying in a straight line along that with bullets kicking up all around us. Um, I tell you what, that was an interesting moment. I loved going to a boys only school, you know, there, there were none of the, um, the, the competitiveness for trying to get some pretty girl's attention. It was just guys hanging out together being themselves. And I think we concentrated more on our education because of that. Uh, there weren't the distractions of the opposite sex. Um, it was pretty disciplined school. Um, but I, I I really advocate it because I think that I grew up with, a, with a, a better education because of it. Quit ye like men. Great motto, isn't it? What does that mean? It was a challenge to all of us that we were to have backbone, that we were to stand tall, and that we were to make a difference in our community and in our world. Um, that life was a precious gift that was to be an investment for the benefit of society and our world. Great school to go to. We spent so much time out in the bush. Um, it was second nature to us to live with snakes and many things that New Zealanders find quite uncomfortable were, were just part of life for us. And I can remember on one of those occasions um, coming across a, a little baby elephant that had been bogged down in, in uh, mud. Obviously from the look of it, its mother had tried to get it out and wasn't successful and had walked off. And so while we had some lookouts watching for mother elephant, we got in and put branch, thick branches underneath it and managed to pull this thing out and get it on the side and uh, left it to itself, wandered off and uh, sometime later its mother came back and fetched it. So that was, I mean, how many people can tell stories like that?